Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're glad you're here to join us for the presentation on information processing for government entities. My name is Kim Torres, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at ImageSource. And I am happy to introduce our speaker today, Randy Weekly. He is the vice president of software development at ImageSource, and his responsibilities include the development and delivery of our iLynx product suite. Randy has spent the last 25 years working in research, systems architecture, and technical leadership positions, and has a wealth of knowledge in the ECM field. His experience covers a variety of technical and industries from space shuttle guidance navigation and control analysis at NASA to GIS and satellite imagery at GTE, as well as video conferencing system design at MCI. We're going to be taking your questions today in the chat function uh, feature there over probably on the right-hand side of your screen. And Randy is going to answer those questions at the end um, of the demo portion uh, today of today's presentation. You can also contact us on any of our social media outlets, such as Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And you can also visit our ImageSource website. With that, I'm going to head things over to you, Randy. All right. Thanks, Kim. And uh, we want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today. We've got some really interesting things to talk about, very practical and applicable uh, technologies uh, that you can uh, start leveraging today. And just to kind of frame up what, we're, what we'll cover, uh, we'll start by talking about some of the challenges uh, that we all face dealing with paper-based forms. And if you're on the call with us, it probably means that you have some portion of your business that's relying on paper forms today. And believe me, you're not at all alone. Uh, the, the Association for Information and Image Management, or AIM, uh, states that even within their community, over a third of companies that they've surveyed don't use any type of e-forms or even uh, document capture as part of their primary business processes. And for the other two-thirds of the companies that do use those technologies, less than 40% of them use the e-form information or captured metadata for downstream routing and processing. So there's a lot of opportunity for some advancement here in this area. So after we've commiserated a bit on some of these paper challenges, we'll walk through a real-world customer story, and we'll see how they've started the process of moving away from paper forms to a completely paperless courtroom. And we'll take a look at uh, one of their first uh, electronic forms as well. Now, eForm solutions are certainly not limited to government applications, so we'll cover some of the general benefits of electronic form solutions as well and dive a little deeper into specifically some of the capabilities of the iLinks forms product. Uh, and then we'll talk about another uh, set of eForms use cases. So last year, AIM put together a really fascinating study on the realities of dealing with paper here in America, in corporate America. And the study found that on average, a paper form costs companies about $3.50, and that's for every form processed. Now, that $3.50 includes the printing, distribution, mailing, collection, and sorting of the paper forms, but it does not include the rekeying of that paper form information, the filing, or the long-term storage and management of the, the resulting paper, which we feel would more than double that $3.50 figure uh, over the total lifespan of the paper form. AIM assembled information from 449 respondents within their community, 26% of which were actually federal, state, and local government agencies. And they found, not surprisingly, that some of the top issues dealing with paper-based processes included things like uh, rekeying, searching for, and filing the paper, with 55% of the respondents still rekeying paper form data into some line of business or back office system. Another obvious drawback here with paper forms is the hard dollar costs. Uh, these would be costs like you know, the initial printing of the forms, mailing a completed form, and moving the paper around during the processing of those forms. And finally, the storage and management of all that paper. Business process visibility, or lack thereof, is also a huge problem in a paper form process. When a customer calls in to inquire about the status of their application, uh, you know, tracking down a uh, their specific piece of paper across some number of deaths can be very painful. Another AIM statistic suggests that you'll also lose about 11% of your paper content. 
The AIM study goes on to describe several other issues that deal with some of the downstream access and, and processing of the paper forms. And based on our experience, we'd add a few other challenges that, that really should be on this list. And, and think these are things like security. So securing a piece of paper as it travels from desk to desk is quite a challenge. And corrections. So if a paper form comes in and it contains missing or wrong information, the process of tracking down the, the person that filled out that form, has submitted that form, and then getting that corrected information is very costly and time consuming. And another issue is form versioning. So if I change my form, then that means I toss away all the paper forms that were sitting out there uh, printed. I reprint my forms. And then I also have to make sure that everyone's using the latest version of the form, which can be challenging as well. So the best solution to these paper form challenges is an electronic form solution like iLinks eForms. And with eForms, you can completely eliminate paper forms at the source, eliminating the cost of printing and mailing, filing, and managing the paper forms. Lookups and validations that are built into the iLinks eForms product will speed input uh, of the form data and ensure accuracy of this information at collection time. We'll talk more about that, but that's, that's very important, is that at collection time. eForms eliminates that time-consuming and error-prone rekeying process as you're trans transferring the information from the paper form into your system of record. And analysts estimate that process will, will see about 5 to 10 percent errors uh, for, each, uh, for each paper form. You can electronically route forms for additional data entry, uh, approvals, and digital signatures. And using the electronic routing, you can quickly get this information out of the forms directly into your line of business systems and shorten your cycle time significantly. With the iLinks uh, form designer, uh, you've got a WYSIWYG graphical design tool. It's very flexible, very easy to create these, these forms, and very easy to change and then republish the forms as well. The system provides secure access to the individual form templates. It also encrypts all of the data uh, within the form and as it transmits across the network. So it provides a very secure access to the, to the form environment. And you can also complete these processes with the digital signatures I just mentioned. And some of the, some of the industries may require a uh, sophisticated third-party uh, digital signature technology, but in many cases we found that the user's Windows credentials actually will suffice. So let's take a look at how a very forward-thinking court system is addressing these paper challenges using an electronic forms and content management solution. And the organization we're focusing on today is the California Administrative Office of the Courts, or AOC. The California AOC is leading the charge to create a technologically advanced paperless courtroom that will help them to reduce their costs allow their people to focus on their core competencies and core tasks as opposed to shuffling paper around. It will streamline the court processes to improve constituent and customer service and decrease their carbon footprint. Now, to accomplish these goals, the AOC has endorsed the iLinks Capture, iLinks eForms, and IBM FileNet products as the core technology infrastructure for this paperless initiative. And we're very honored and very pleased that ImageSource has been approved by the AOC to partner with them on this most exciting endeavor. Now, within the California AOC, the Superior Court in Stanislaus County is, plan is using iLinks, uh, ImageSource, iLinks, and IBM FileNet products uh, to deliver a paperless solution first to the Department of Child Support Services. But future projects include paperless solutions that will be delivered to family law and criminal law as well. So let's take a quick look at a kind of a before and after snapshot of the Stanislaw Court. So in the past, when a court proceeding was completed, uh, the court clerk would assemble and record uh, a number of paper documents and forms that include things like uh, witness testimonies and whatever the results of the proceedings were, court orders, uh, rulings, uh, and any fines or settlements. Uh, and this paper was then shuffled around the courtroom uh, to be reviewed and signed off by lawyers and plaintiffs and defendants, and then ultimately handed over to the judge for his or her final review and signature before the entire paper bundle is filed away. And as with most paper form processes, 
all of these activities take a, a fair amount of time, significant time, in fact, and introduce potential for human errors along the way, whether it's some missed signatures or missed or incorrect information. And ultimately, information is locked up inside these paper forms and these, this paper content. And so there's a rekeying task that uh, has to move uh, important information from the paper into the Stanislaw system of record. Stanislaw Court has changed this paper process into a streamlined, efficient, and entirely electronic solution. And the first step in doing this was to address the court's need for supporting content. And they do this by scanning and indexing all of the associated case documentation through iLinks Capture. iLinks Capture then takes that digital content and automatically delivers it to the Stanislaw, Stanislaw FileNet content management system. Court clerks can then easily search the FileNet system and assemble all of the appropriate documentation into individual case folders. And then using mobile tablets and without even leaving the courtroom, these case folders are then accessed by the judges and commissioners, uh, clerks and attorneys at any point during the proceedings. For the second part of the paperless solution, Stanislaw is using iLinks eForms to fill out and submit all of the forms required to complete the proceedings. And they're performing this part of the process uh, right on those same mobile tablets and right from the courtroom as well. The electronic forms have been constructed to match the previous paper forms fairly closely, so there's a familiar look and feel to the form, so there's not a big training initiative. And using iLinks eForms workflow, the court forms will now flow electronically through the established processes. And this enables real-time contribution of data, collection of required electronic signatures from attorneys, judges, commissioners, clerks, etc. And this system will provide immediate access to all relevant digital content, whether it's for review or for collaboration. iLinks eForms will take care of collecting all of the required signatures and even the official court stamp, which includes a date and a signature to, val to validate uh, the clerk that, was, uh, that stamped the uh, form itself. And in case the forms uh, need to be printed, all of the required supporting documents, like the Notice of Rights and Responsibilities, uh, applicable codes, will be printed automatically by the form system. And once all the content has been reviewed and signed off by all of the required parties, the digital content is then automatically and immediately delivered to multiple systems of record for archival with a complete audit trail of every step in this process. So I wanted to cover some of the specific iLinks capabilities that are being leveraged by Stanislaw uh, to transition from this paper process into this electronic process. <clears throat> Excuse me. So iLinks integrates directly with the Stanislaw County Active Directory to provide a very comprehensive content and processing security. The system also includes encrypted content and data transmissions. And to speed the form input and ensure the accuracy of the information that's being collected, iLinks database lookup, lookup capabilities allow the court to leverage existing information in the Stanislaw case management system directly from within the form. The collection and burn-in of handwritten signatures in electronic format exactly mimics the paper signature process. And the forms include, <clears throat> excuse me, the forms include business logic to dynamically adjust which form fields are required based on the user's previous input. And the forms are even smart enough they can hide or show uh, entire pages within the form uh, based on what's been collected so far. And the digital, in, digital information that's gathered in the form can then be used for automated routing rules downstream within the iLinks workflow. And finally, using the iLinks Capture product, these signed forms, the input data, and all of the associated content are delivered directly to the IBM FileNet system and simultaneously to an internal Stanislaw system for archival. The technical staff at Stanislaw is absolutely top notch and partnered with the image source team, this first phase of the paperless courtroom has gone from kickoff to go live in less than 90 days. And this phase included not only the design and development of the forms, but also an extensive amount of testing, as well as a parallel deployment model to ensure that this transition from paper to the electronic process happens very smoothly and safely. Phase two of the project will develop and deliver additional forms from both Image Source and the Stanislaw's own IT group, which will be taking over complete ownership of their system. 
the Status Law IT group will be building out new court forms, uh, new workflows, and extending this paperless process in new and exciting areas throughout the Status Law court system. So let's take a quick look at uh, one of Stanislaw's uh, first forms. And this screenshot here on the left, you see a screenshot. And actually, I think this is an earlier version of the form uh, next to an actual scan of the existing paper form. And it's kind of hard to see without drilling down into each, each of the individual elements. And I'll show some of this in the demo here in a second. But <clears throat> the electronic form has many advantages, even in just the presentation of the information. And you see here on the, the on the left hand side the screenshot of the electronic form, uh, there's a there's a large text area here, others other orders. And uh, in this section you can put in as much information as you want. On the paper form you've got three lines, which means if you need to uh, record more information than that, you either write on the back of this form or you, you try to include another uh, page of the form and you know of course that, that can be risky in, in ensuring that that information gets recorded correctly. Um, additionally, the paper form has to, has to be able to display every available input option, right? Um, the electronic form can be smarter than that, and it can hide and show input based on previous selections and input field values so that you really can streamline the process of filling out that form and simplify that form. Uh, the electronic form also includes drop-down lists to make sure that the form filler knows what the appropriate options even are. Um, and something as simple as just a pop-up calendar, which I'll show you, it makes it very easy to select the right date and get it formatted correctly within the form data. Okay, let me switch over to my eForm system. And at this point, I'm not logged in, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. And, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you, um, and you'll have to pay attention here because this will happen pretty quickly. Uh, once my credentials have been validated, uh, a, a dialog will pop up here as the form client communicates right here with the server. And what that's doing is making sure that I have the latest version of all of the forms that are available to me accessible to this client. Um, so if a new version had been published, uh, that synchronization process would have alerted my client to the fact that there is a new form that I can fill out or a new version of that form that I can fill out. Um, so. At this point, I, everything is, is all synchronized, and my client understands what has happened on the server since the last time I logged in. So I'm going to open a form here, and on this open dialog, I've got some, I have some options. Form templates here on this tab show me everything that's on the server that I have access to as my authenticated user. And so I've got three forms that I can choose to, to fill out. Local sessions are forms that I have started to fill out, but for one reason or another, maybe I was offline or maybe I just needed to get some more information, I've saved the form and I've, I've stopped com completing that form and, and I haven't finished it or sent it on to the server yet. So these are just sitting on my hard drive waiting to be finished. The remote sessions tab, this is where I interact with the form workflow. So if there were uh, forms waiting for me on the server to process, they would appear here in this list. And these are forms that have already been filled out and submitted by some user, but that I have some responsibility to act uh, on that form, whether it's to uh, add additional information, maybe I'm approving something, and maybe I have to sign that form before it moves on in the workflow. So I don't have anything in my list right now that's waiting on me. But So I'm going to select the, uh, the court form. Now this is, uh, I'm displaying this on a, a laptop here, so this form is designed for you know more of a, a portrait uh, layout on a tablet, so uh, we'll have to do a bit of scrolling here. Uh, and sitting next to me, I've got this little this little uh, tablet here. So I'm going to try and do some some writing into some of these form fields. It's a little little odd because I'm I'm not writing directly on the surface of the form here, but we'll we'll see if we can make the best of it. So I've got a couple of uh, ways I can interact with this form. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm on a laptop, so I could choose simply to type information in, and that's fine. Uh, but more likely, and in Stanislaw's case, I'm using a tablet out in the courtroom. So I'm probably going to be using a stylus or even my finger to fill that out. So I'm going to switch modes here and switch into the stylus mode. And I'm going to try to fill this out on my, <clears throat> on my tablet here. Now, I'm going to enter a number. And what's going to happen is two things. The form is going to convert my handwriting into text. And 
after it converts my, my input into text, it's going to go back into a, uh, a sample database and pull some information to simulate the Stanislaus case management system, and it's going to pull information from that database and display it here in the form, as long as I can type, uh, write in a, a recognizable number here. So let's try six, seven, eight. Okay, so it converted my information to text. Now you see the six is red there. That indicates that it wasn't exactly sure that that was a six, but that was its best guess. Um, I could go in and, and just write on top of that, and it would would pick a different number. Um, <clears throat> but that's the number I was actually trying to type. Um, and so you see it, it pulled a, a plaintiff from that sample database associated with case number 678 directly into my form. Um, so I can I can type additional stuff in here uh, directly from my keyboard, or I can switch back over to the pen mode, Oops. and I can input information with my stylus. If I can write this well enough. Okay, so it, it read that and converted that into text. Uh, the other thing that's uh, unique about the e-forms is the drop-downs that I mentioned earlier. So in a paper form, of course, I don't know what the options are. I simply have to write them and, and hope that I get the name spelled correctly and it's, it's the right person. And with electronic form, I have the benefit of pulling this information from a back office system or database and populating those drop-downs uh, dynamically as as this form is being feel, filled out really in real time so that these are very up-to-date uh, lists of information so I can go through this walk through the form and make my selections and do my do my input here let me show you <clears throat> uh, just real quickly if I choose this option you'll see that uh, I got a little uh, indicator here month month day day year 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 pop up and I can just simply click on that and that invokes this this just quick little uh, date selector uh, item here, which is going to help me, uh, you know, make sure I, I get the right date and I see that calendar, and then the information is input into the form in exactly the right format. So that's that's pretty handy. Uh, the next thing I'll show you is down here on this other orders, and I, I mentioned this uh, when I, we were looking at the screenshot earlier. Um, so I'm going to click that, and that enabled this other drop down. Now this this drop down here, this is kind of unique. Uh, this form was uh, developed so that for this particular field, we're pulling back some kind of boilerplate information. Uh, this is just some sample so uh, text here, so this may or may not make sense, uh, but it's just an example of how information can be pulled from a back-end database, and it doesn't have to be just a simple name or, or a department. It can be a whole chunk of text. Um, additionally, this form has uh, some, some more smarts. If I select one of these boilerplate options it's going to prompt me for a couple pieces of information and number of number of places i'm going to pick five and total number uh, i can't read the title there and i'm going to pick six and what's going to happen is it's going to take that boilerplate information and it's going to make some substitutions so there's the five that i chose and there's the six that i chose and of course these could be anything you could be picking names and it would substitute into this text uh, you could uh, dynamically pick different types of boilerplate information to be substituted uh, as that information is placed into the into the text or into the form. Uh, and so at this point I can go in and I can uh, uh, type more information directly into this um, into this field or I could switch over if I'm on a tablet and let's see if I can write something here. I gotta switch up here. Okay, let me try this. Writing pretty terrible. Well, it the, my cursor was up above. It's actually uh, that information is right here. So it actually got the text very well. 
All right, so that's, uh, that's kind of some of the basics of interacting with the form. One last thing I'll show you is around the signatures. On the bottom left, you'll see a date field, and that's not filled in yet. But I'm going to start signing this form here with my tablet, and, and you can just watch what happens with that, with that date field. Oops, got outside the... So it automatically stamped this date. Now, if I submitted this form, uh, that uh, handwritten signature there, all, and all of this information that I've input gets pushed back into the back end system. So I can collect and deal with that information uh, in any way. Uh, it just depends on my business process from this point forward. OK, let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right. so. That was some very specific information about how Stanislaw Quartz are using iLinks uh, within their environment to create some, some really nice streamlined paperless solutions. So let's talk about some just generic capabilities of the iLinks eForms product really quickly. Um, in order to provide the most ubiquitous access possible to, to electronic forms, iLinks eForms client works on virtually every popular computing device today. So that includes Apple iPad, uh, the Google Android tablets and slates, and just about any Windows platform at all, tablets and desktops and laptops. And with, this, with these eForms on each of these clients, um, you, you get this robust data validation. Uh, you get a very touch-friendly environment that uh, also supports small form factor devices, like uh, you know, one of the smaller tablets or smaller iPads. You can also interact with the devices that are on those uh, those uh, tablets, such as if I was if I was filling that form out on an iPad, I could use the camera and snap a picture that get, gets included directly into that form. I also have the ability in eForms to generate HTML forms uh, that can really be used on on any platform. In our demo, we showed how iLinks eForms can leverage you know, the built-in device keyboard. So I typed some information in, uh, which is great if you're on a laptop. But if you're on a tablet, you don't really have a keyboard, or, or maybe you, you don't like using the built-in keyboard. Uh, you, know, you can use your stylus uh, or even your fingertip. And, and using that, you can do some freeform things, like creating diagrams, marking up photos. So I could snap a picture and then mark it up. I can write freeform notes um, and collect digital signatures. And you know, just briefly on the digital signatures, um, we found, and um, you know, analysts have, have found that digital signatures are really becoming as legally binding as physical handwritten signatures. And things like eSign Law and uh, Uniform Electronic Transactions Act, these are these are supported by the federal government and have been adopted by 47 states. So if you have uh, a signature requirement uh, associated with your form processing, it's definitely worth looking into some digital signatures. In fact, AIM says that 42% of form processes are interrupted to collect a physical, phys physical signature. Now, on average, this adds three days to the process. So that can just really cut down on, on your, your uh, cycle time if you can eliminate those three days. You saw how eForms built-in character recognition works. So I could write into a field and have the ICR component automatically convert that to, to text. You can also incorporate advanced advanced digital uh, signature technology, third-party technology, if you need to go beyond just that handwritten input. Uh, I like forms also has built-in speech-to-text for hands-free input. You can attach content from your desktop directly into a form. Uh, I mentioned you, know, you can snap a picture, embed images directly in your form, and even annotate on top of those right within the eForms environment and collect other more advanced information, such as GPS data, barcodes, voice memos, and even RFID information. The business rules within your form can easily be added to enforce uh, the quality of data that you're collecting. You can avoid missing information and flag potential errors uh, so that it even prevents the submission of bad data. Most of these rules can be defined using point-and-click operations within the eForms designer application. Or you can drop into the eForms scripting functionality and create virtually any level of sophisticated validation or business logic that you need. And these capabilities uh, are are very important because they provide users with real-time feedback during the data collection uh, process. So you get accurate and complete data the first time. Um, so you saw demonstrated the ability for eForms to do database lookups against a back-end system. 
Uh, this ensures data accuracy, and it also speeds up the, the completion, form completion process, because you can populate uh, any number of fields uh, during that lookup. You can also take information from the form itself and push it back into the database in real time, if that's part of your business requirements. Now, a lot of organizations today, and this is a growing number, have a portion of their workforce that is mobile. They need to work away from their desks. And in many cases, they can't rely on wide area wireless communications when they're in the field, now, whether that's just because of uh, connectivity issues uh, or security issues. And so they want to be able to conduct business remotely, um, you know, recording information using mobile devices even when they're uh, detached or offline. And then uh, with iLinks eForms, they can do that. And then when they, uh, when they get back connected with their network, whether that's uh, at back at the office or it's at home or at a hotel, uh, the data is automatically uploaded into the central system. I think eForms is integrated with a large number of back-end systems like SAP and Oracle and FileNet and, of course, iLinks Capture and iLinks Content Store, also SharePoint, Salesforce, and a bunch of other ones. And this allows you to go into those systems and uh, gather that real-time information, that uh, information that you're going to pull forward into the form environment to, uh, to perform your validations and lookups. And, of course, that's impossible with paper. And additionally, your submitted form data can be delivered immediately back to these uh, line of business systems. So there's no lag waiting for uh, a paper form to be completed and maybe even mailed through the postal service, um, sorted in the mail room, open filed, and then rekeyed into the back end system. Now, a few years ago, so this, this study is actually uh, is done back in 2011, the Cadence Group found over 14,000 federal, state, and industry laws, standards, and regulations that deal with paper and electronic records processing. So with that many regulations out there, chances are pretty good that we could all find benefit in enhancing compliance within our business processes. So using iLinks eForms, you can streamline the processing while providing complete audit trails and business process tracking. And using iLinks eForms, customers have created solutions that are FDA 21, HL7, and HIPAA compliant. And if you're a federal agency, it can even streamline the Freedom of Information Act requests, which apparently is, is quite a significant need given that there were 72,000 backlogged FOIA requests at the end of 2012. So a, a key factor in analyzing a potential technology solution is, of course, its return on your investment, its ROI. Uh, other factors like regulatory and compliance requirements will often weigh in, but the length of time it takes a technology to pay for itself is, is usually the primary driver. eForm solutions typically have a very high ROI. In fact, AIM finds that 50% of companies adopting a paperless strategy see 100% payback in a single 12-month budget period. Stannis Law Court is very encouraging. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting case study, and we'll keep you up to date on their progress going forward. But eForm solutions can replace paper in almost any process or industry. So let's walk through a couple of examples, or a few examples, um, some case studies where eForms have been used to eliminate paper and streamline uh, forms processing in different uh, types of scenarios. So the first customer uh, is, is an eForm success story uh, involving safety training compliance. This customer is using eForms to deliver new training and recertifications, as well as monitoring this, the compliance uh, with those safety training programs. To date, they've developed 23 forms, which are consumed on Windows Surface devices. Uh, these safety certification records, once they've been completed and uh, stored electronically, can be quickly and easily found and audited. And, of course, with uh, an all uh, uh, paperless solution uh, using eForms, they've eliminated all of the paper storage and all of the loss uh, of that certification information that occurred when they were just managing uh, the paper. Another eForms customer has uh, created a completely paperless quality assurance process that includes digital signatures collected on mobile devices. And the eForms are actually tied directly into their production process and can identify and suspend out of compliance production lines. And using this uh, solution, they've significantly reduced production errors and eliminated uh, missing uh, quality assurance information. Another customer uses eForms for high-volume field inspections. 
and they've realized uh, some tremendous cost savings and dramatically increased their capacity. Uh, the project delivery was done very quickly and has delivered uh, in one year uh, $675,000 in cost savings for this particular customer. Home health care is another area for great improvements. This particular customer has used eForms to streamline in-home in uh, nurse operations. Uh, by reducing the amount of time nurses spend on paperwork by over 20 hours per month. Um, they've reduced cycle times and late submissions, while at the same time increasing the accuracy of their information. And this uh, paperless solution for them is saving about $1,200 a day. Another customer using eForms in conjunction with other digital content, such as spreadsheets and photos, to improve their overall data quality within their, um, within their input gathering process. They've been able to streamline their operations to the tune of $60,000 worth of savings per year. And this is the last use case. This describes an eForms customer that has not only leveraged eForms to reduce costs and, and streamline their operations, but they're actually using eForms to drive additional revenue for their products. So that's, that's really kind of an interesting flip on the, on the scenario. So today we've, we've heard about Stanislaus uh, Court's paperless courtroom initiative and how several other customers across different industries have leveraged the benefits of eForms. Um, and just to kind of recap, the, the benefits that we've talked about today are saving time by eliminating rekeying work, improving the quality of critical data using uh, creation time validation and back-end system lookups, and the obvious benefit, reducing costs associated with printing the actual paper form, scanning and storage uh, of the final uh, form, paper form product. And maybe an overlooked benefit uh, paperwork's pretty dull and expensive. Um, isn't it better to engage employees in higher value activities like processing more cases, seeing more patients, handling more claims, and better serving constituents? Using an eForms type of solution, you can make better decisions faster with access to near real-time information. So an, adjust, an adjuster or an inspector uh, can deliver actionable work directly back to the office before they even leave the customer site. You can drastically improve the visibility into your forms processes, which will also make compliance initiatives easier as well. And of course, you can reduce your carbon footprint with a paperless process. So with all that, uh, hopefully we've, we've shown how iLinks eForms can deliver, uh, along with Capture, some, some significant productivity gains and cost reductions. But I just wanted to highlight a couple of other products within the iLinks suite that can further enhance and extend these benefits throughout your enterprise and to systems that you already own. Uh, using iLinks Capture, uh, this, this product is a production level uh, capture product. It, it's very simple and easy to use, but it's, it's strong enough to meet the most demanding capture volumes. It also includes a very powerful workflow uh, subsystem uh, that allows you to streamline business processes. And it can be used in conjunction with eForms as an additional content onboarding solution. iLinks Content Store is a, an easy to use, uh, very powerful web-based content repository that's perfect for managing your completed electronic forms. Oh, and by the way, iLinks Capture and iLinks Content Store will be featured on upcoming webinars, so uh, keep an eye out for, for those announcements as well. Uh, with iLinks Integrate, you can deliver and consume content and, and data between any two applications with zero coding. Um, so this allows you to deliver contextually re relevant content, including eForms, uh, directly to end users without requiring them to leave their line of business interface iLinks Import automates the consumption of large amounts of content from a variety of sources and delivers the content to iLinks Capture or even a third-party capture solution like Kofax. iLinks Release accepts content from iLinks Capture or Kofax and delivers that content to iLinks Content Store or some other third-party content management system. So Image Source has been implementing content management solutions for 20 years across the world and to hundreds of customers. And these, these solutions include not just the iLinks products, but also products from Oracle and, as we talked about today, IBM FileNet, Kofax, and other technologies. But using our unique ECM ecosystem methodology, we can help you craft 
that optimal paperless strategy for your organization. And this methodology starts with in-depth interviews with your line of business uh, users and stakeholders and your IT groups. Next, we formulate a comprehensive analysis that identifies lines of businesses that are underserved with your existing uh, content management or forms capabilities. Uh, thirdly, we'll work with you to craft that perfect content management strategy for your organization. And finally, uh, we'll co-present that, uh, that proposal and those, that uh, information with you uh, to your management. So whether you just want to eliminate uh, you know, paper forms within your business processes or you want to develop uh, a robust long-term uh, enterprise content management roadmap, this proven methodology can help you uh, define realistic strategies uh, to drive significant process improvements throughout your organization. All right, so that's all we have for the, the presentation portion. Let's open it up for some questions. Uh, Randy, we got two questions in for you today. Uh, the first one, is there security around the form after it's filed? Okay, yeah, that's a great question, and the answer is absolutely. There is security all throughout the process. So when I did that quick demo, um, I showed you the forms that I had access to. Now on the server, there may be many, many more forms than that. I only had access to three. So we can secure it um, even before you're, you're filling a form. As you're filling the form and once it's submitted, security can be involved in that process as well. Uh, that form can, can uh, go into a workflow. Those workflow queues are secured as well, so only certain user groups have access to certain queues within that e-form workflow. And then at, at the end of the process, well, actually it doesn't have to be at the end of the process, but along the way and typically at the end, uh, the, the form will generate some type of output. And that output, um, like if you're capturing digital signatures like, like Stanislaw, uh, is probably going to be some type of image or PDF file that then gets archived or put into a content management system. And absolutely, once it goes into one of those systems, then the security of that system will take over and secure all that content. Okay, and the next one is, what has been the biggest benefit that Stanislaw experienced from implementing eForms? Hmm. Well, the biggest benefit. Um, well, I, I would say the biggest benefit that they're going they're going to see, and this is this is just my interpretation, um, would be uh, increased uh, constituent and customer satisfaction and serviceability. So there's a lot of facets to that because it includes things like reducing the costs uh, associated with um, you know courtroom proceedings streamlining those and, and making those go faster so that they can hear more cases. Um, and, you know, adding security to that, making sure only the right people are seeing the right information and have easy access to that. And then long term, being able to go back in and instead of sorting through boxes of paper, I can very quickly and easy uh, do some searching within my content management system and find that. And so all of these things really just add up to better serving my constituents and better serving my customers. Uh, by saving the money and improving those processes. Okay, that was all we had for questions today, Randy. Um, I want to thank you again for joining us, and uh, thanks, Randy, again for a great presentation. Yep, thanks, everyone.